Good morning, let's take my thinking cap off. Uh, this morning I've been thinking about global warming and I've been looking at polar ice caps and the difference in the size of the polar ice caps between the first time we measured them with satellites in about 1977 79 when the first satellites went up and started recording them and the difference to 2007 <laughs> and the difference between 1977 and 2005 was dramatic but the difference between 2005 and 2007 is just as dramatic it's like doubled in its um, decrease over the last um, two years now you have to wonder where all this water's going because the polar ice caps are melting and there's literally trillions of litres of water dumping itself into the oceans and yes oceans have risen around about five six centimetres over the last 20 25 years uh, but they would have risen more and the reason being is this we're building more houses which is causing more CO2 pollution and creating global warming but the second effect of building houses is you have a number of toilets at least one and each toilet holds around about seven five to seven litres of water so that takes a little bit out of the oceans and then you have a heating system it means you have a boiler and a load of pipes and these boilers and pipes they have a reservoir of water in them and you probably have a cold water tank and maybe a hot water tank holding more water so each house that you uh, build holds around about 100 litres of water on the planet you're talking there's around about a billion houses with these kind of heating systems in and modern conveniences in so you're talking in English terms around about 100 billion litres of water are just stored in houses if we release that it would raise the oceans a little bit Right, if you're talking US, that's a trillion litres of water just in houses. And that's a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, that would fill a few swimming pools. Just imagine the amount of swimming pools we have around the planet as well, which hold a lot of water. And coal-fired power stations, how much water do they hold? They hold quite a few. Anyway, then you've got cars and transportation and commercial vehicles and what have you. And that's another big big water storage keeping the water out of the oceans and you're talking there's what 600 million cars on the planet right now and in each car they hold around about six litres of water on an average some hold eight some hold three some hold four averagely they hold about six litres of water each the radiator the cooling system the heat is inside the car they've got around about six litres of water in them the, the washer bottle maybe 10 litres of water in them but on average around about 6 litres of water per car so you're talking just in cars alone UK scale 36 billion litres of water stored in cars worldwide American scale 360 billion litres of water yeah. and then you're talking commercial vehicles another 24 billion litres of water you're talking trillions and trillions of litres of water stored in modern technology for cooling things down or supplying water for our everyday needs if you can just imagine the pipes throughout England filled with water to supply your taps there's literally oh there's just too much water to even contemplate how much water we're storing in reservoirs around the world China have just built a reservoir which is the size of a city and as deep as three skyscrapers stood on top of each other imagine how much water that stores and hasn't been let into the sea you've got the Panama Canal it stores trillions of litres of water I think what the world governments are doing is trying to mask the effect of global warming and what the polar ice caps are doing just imagine if all of the dams in the world decided to uh, break and on the same day half of the world's heating systems broke and leaked into the drainage systems of the world and back into the rivers and thus into the sea and at the same day half of the world's cars radiators cracked 
and half of the world's trucks radiators cracked that would raise sea level significantly if you let all that water go back into the system instantly that's how much water we're holding back from sea levels I think what we're doing is building all this technology I mean cars for instance we can have um, electric thermal ultraviolet infrared heating systems inside the car which don't blow air over you, they just keep you warm thus negating the need for water inside the car and it, let's face it it's expensive when you get a water leak inside your car <laughs> it doesn't matter where it comes from it usually gets expensive um, the internal combustion engine which we use in cars uses petrol or diesel or other kinds of biofuels or fuels, liquid fuels. There's engines out there which don't use fuels, just use electricity. They just literally either produce their own electricity or use ele stored electricity. And I'll just give you an example of electrical heaters which you could install in your house, thermal heaters that you can put inside your house which don't use water. Infrared heaters just heating the floor and the heat just rises straight up through you, that was keeping you, you know, warm. We don't need to stop water to um, have heat everywhere. In fact, water, when you combine with electricity, is dangerous. And as we know, there's lots of accidents that happen throughout the world because of the way we store water and electricity close to each other. Now, also, the polar ice caps melt and the extra water goes into the oceans and underneath the oceans, the oceans look quite flat on the top when you look at them, although there is troughs in the oceans um, but the more depth of water you have the more pressure there is at the bottom and the more pressure you have the more tightly the atoms are packed thus that lowers, artificially lowers the level of the sea Plus, that puts more pressure into the deep parts of the ocean than what are in the not so deep parts of the ocean. And that puts more pressure on the Earth's crust in those points, which thus creates more earthquakes. So, I can imagine, with the extra pressure going into the oceans, <laughs> and the sea levels are rising, even though we're storing that much water everywhere, and the fact that we're storing water on the Earth's crust in certain places, we're not spreading it out equally, we're putting it into the cities and we're not spreading it out everywhere, we're putting more and more weight into certain places on the planet which is creating more and more um, pressure in different parts of the planet and we're not very clever, we're putting it in the wrong places and we're going to be causing earthquakes and volcanoes to erupt which wouldn't erupt, we're going to we're creating more and more problems just by doing what we're doing and when that big massive ice pack on top of Greenland melts that's not only millions of litres of water for every litre of water is a kilogram of weight there's going to be a release of weight on Greenland of you can't even calculate it it's just so much weight is going to disappear from that, that part of the earth so the earth is going to like go and squeeze up a little bit because the, the amount of pressure has just been released from that great big land mass and that's going to create problems with the Earth's crust as well I would imagine I'm just theorising this if you agree with me <laughs> what do you think we ought to do about it I think we ought to start taking some actions now because the governments clearly aren't thinking about this and this is going to cause foreseen problems far in the future which can be extremely hard to control what are we going to do about it who knows? I'd just say stop breeding because it's not worth it. <laughs>